Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the East Meets West Hunt podcast presented by Onyx. The Onyx Hunt app is the premier GPS hunting app available for hunters by hunters. And one of the things I want to talk about within the Onyx Hunt app is the possible access feature. So, for example, in Pennsylvania, you know, we have, you can check out the government lands or public lands, private lands, as well as being able to see areas that are kind of a mixture in, in the middle. They're owned privately. Um, sometimes that can be timber and land conservation groups but they allow hunting to the public. So in Pennsylvania alone, Onyx has mapped 520,000 acres of possible access lands. And you just need to be able to research the rules on these private lands before you can go and recreate on these places. And by doing that is when you click on the areas, you can see the the name, the tax address, um, everything else with the company research that with Google, give them a call, um, or they might even have it available on the website. But either way, you can find information out and have some, you know, find some honey holes that maybe other people aren't finding because of that. To check out the Onyx Hunt app, you head over to onyxmaps.com, use the coupon code EMW, that'll save yourself 20% off of the Hunt app. In addition, the University of Elk Hunting by Corey Jacobson and Elk 101 is the most comprehensive elk hunting learning course available as I've been using the course for four years now and from the beginning it's helped me learn just about everything when it comes to elk hunting. So one module I want to talk about is using elk calls. So this is module five within the course and it really t- teaches you how to select the right elk call, you know, for not not every call is a one size fits all just you know and so you're able to learn you know why a call is made for a certain purpose reason the materials that they're made out of and the purpose for that and then Corey goes into actually showing you how to do it giving exercises and homework to be able to learn uh, these specific calls and to make you a better elk caller and elk hunter so with right now being you know, the time of year uh, where we're kind of stuck inside and doing things, what a, a you know better time to be able to learn this than now. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure that your significant other that you're living with won't like you blowing on calls all the time, but hey, this is a, a great time to be able to do that. So to save 20% off of the University of Elk Hunting online course, you can head over to elk101.com and use the coupon code East Meets West, and that will save you 20% off of the online course. And lastly, Tethered. Tethered has changed the game when it comes to mobile hunting and saddle hunting in general. So the, their new Phantom saddle that just came out here at the end of February is really built for comfort. It's made, meant for all day sits in the stand and just eliminating any unnecessary weight and bulk from your elevated hunting system. The Phantom is very adaptable and fits waist from 28 inches all the way up to 40 inches and with a bunch of different comfort zones and comfort channels to be able to adjust and get the the fit for you you know if you combine that with a predator platform you have an extremely ultralight hunting setup that you can scout with it on your back and get up in a tree and hunt right away so check out everything with tethered and saddle hunting over at tetherednation.com all right so today i want to start off by going over the the Mountain Buck Monday post that I had yesterday on social media, as well as just go through this story here of um, a successful mountain buck hunt from Spencer Green coming out of the mountains of Western North Carolina. So Spencer wrote in and said, 2019 was a season that he'll never forget. Having an, an arrow deflect off a tiny limb caused him to miss his number one target buck on a piece of public land. So that just really 
grew his determination and it just went up from there. So in late October, scouted several miles on a different piece of public and trying to figure out what the deer were doing in that area. Found a huge bed out on a knob, not that far from where some small trees, the the size of baseball bats had been twisted off, just being rubbed down and further down the mountain found feed sign on Northern, uh, the Northern side, red Oaks, which in 2019, he said it was an unbelievable year for red Oaks in his area, large grapes, huge tracks, had everything you'd be looking for. Waited till a cold front came with some high pressure. He had snowfall the night before that he elected to hunt the buck uh, that evening for several different reasons. One, so he could take his time and be as quiet as possible to get between his bed and feed. And two, knew the thermals would be pulling down the evening, giving a better win. So some of the lessons that he learned to scout more than to hunt and credits Josh Prophet for this advice. So also locating a bed and accessing how to hunt that. So if you haven't checked it out already, head over to the East Meets West Hunt Instagram page and check out the photo of this magnificent magnificent buck. Such a giant whitetail, especially coming from the mountains of North Carolina there. So Spencer, thanks for sending that in. And anybody else that has a, a mountain buck Monday story that they want to share, uh, send that over to me. You can reach me via email at boa east meets west hunt dot com or just probably the easiest way is sending a DM on Instagram. All right, so to kind of move forward with some of the current events going on here, uh, my brother just killed a, a turkey in Colorado this past weekend. Um, he's he lives out in Colorado now, and and it was his first season hunting Miriam's. Uh, with a buddy of his, Chris Toomey, who I had elk hunted with in the past. So Kurt and Chris went out uh, this piece of public where they scouted some turkeys and said it was just absolutely pounded by people. So so many people were out hunting, and um, they ended up uh, – they roosted a bird the night before and then heard the bird um, in the morning, and so did a lot of other people, and it shut up once it hit the ground. And I'm not going to go into the the full story of it here. Hopefully, I can get Kurt on to talk about it. But um, he ended up killing this bird at five yards and is an absolute giant of a Miriam's, which he had no idea how big it was until afterwards when he started sharing the photos and everything. But it had a nine and three eighths inch beard and inch and a quarter spurs, which would put that very high up in the all time rankings in the state of Colorado and um everything so that that's a, a really cool those Miriams are beautiful birds um also have photo of that shared over on instagram you can and you can go over and check that out and this week so actually tomorrow it'll be releasing so on wednesday here this week the new mountain buck scouting youtube series will be up on youtube uh the first episode using onyx to e-scout and what to look for with mountain bucks is going to be live and it's the project that i was working on a few weeks back with justin mueller this is the first of a five part series and it uh the, i really hope that everyone likes these videos it's been a long time coming to put together some of these these scouting series stuff so that'll be coming out and then We'll release the rest of the videos every Wednesday going forward. So one per week and until we go through all five of them there. So check that out over on YouTube. It's just um, my YouTube page is just Bo Martonic, B-E-A-U-M-A-R-T-O-N-I-K. You can check out all the videos there. And yeah, that's uh, that's about it. Hope everyone had a, a great Easter weekend and you know, enjoyed time at their houses or out in the woods or whatever you're able to do with the the current situation. So this t- on today's episode, I'm joined by Caitlin Moss and Brittany Barnhart, which I recorded this episode with the two of these girls out in Indianapolis back at the ATA show, and it was such a such a great um, podcast with them, and just had a good time sitting down and talking with them. They're 
two women that I respect, uh, you know, in the hunting industry and, and what they've done for it. Just not afraid of taking on new challenges and hunting new areas, things that they may have zero experience in the past, but just go out and really try and get after it. So uh, I'm really excited to be able to, to release this episode with, with Caitlin and Brittany. So hope you enjoy. All right, we're live at the ATA show, sitting on these nice leather couches out in the lobby, and I'm joined on the podcast here with Caitlin Moss and Brittany Barnhart. Did I pronounce both your names right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, cool. So, how are you guys doing this morning, or afternoon? Is it afternoon yet? <sighs> You know, I don't even know what time it is. It's afternoon. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> that Morning, though, kind of, considering we got a little bit of a late start <laughs> for us, I'd say. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that happens sometimes at this show, but hey, it is what it is. So, last day of the show here. Um, I'm ready to get out here, to be honest. Yeah, you're going, you're going hunting. Yeah, I'm ready to I'm ready to go hunting. Hit up Ohio, right? Yep, <laughs> ready to get out here, beat the storms, apparently, and then... Yeah, are you guys leaving today, or what are you doing? It's all weather pending right now, just mm-hmm. because it's snowing and icing at home. So I wish we could leave. I mean, but I just I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Very probably hour by hour, we're gonna figure it out. Yeah. So cool. Well, let's start. We'll go around the table here and kind of introduce yourself and you know who you are, what you do. We're gonna start Me first. Me first. All right. <laughs> All right, I guess we're starting with Caitlin. Uh, hi, I'm Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I am originally from Pennsylvania, Harrisburg area, and I moved out to Kansas City, Missouri area now for college, and now I'm living out there and hunting whitetails. <laughs> <laughs> is that the, is that the, the short and sweet Hunting whitetails, yeah. Doing, <laughs> doing a lot of digital media stuff, content creation, and just trying to film some hunts. Yeah. Yeah. So is that what you're is that what you're doing as far as for work? Are you doing anything else, or um, what's what's your look like? I'm look bartending like? currently for some yeah. money. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, this is just, I guess, a hobby because I'm not really doing it for work. I do I do a little bit of freelancing, but yeah. mostly like you know my own stuff, our stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just love to do it. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Do you do you see yourself and and again I'm putting you on the spot here, but that's what I do. So um <laughs> is that something you see yourself? Would you like to do more of it? Would you like to oh, continue yeah. to Yeah. I I just really I have a passion for it. I love it. It's fun to me and a challenge and so I I would love to progress with it. Yeah, that's that's really cool. What about you, Brittany? Um so I'm originally from Florida. Which, if you know anything about hunting there, it totally sucks, um, besides the uh, Osceola's. But I came to Missouri for college as well, and I honestly loved hunting the whitetail so much that I stayed. Like, I've already finished college and everything, so I could have moved home now, but I the hunting is just so fun. And like she said, it's, it is just fun to us, and it's fun to me, so I'm like, I don't know what else I would do. If I wasn't doing that, I guess hobbies, you know, they take over your life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So when you guys went to college together, yes. is that how you met each other? Yes. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, we actually met through her high school sweetheart. Like when I was in middle school, I had an old YouTube channel that was like a hunting channel. And like, I don't know, I, I just met a bunch of people. And that was before Instagram was even invented. Um, and YouTube was just the thing. And so I ended up meeting her boyfriend and then, you know, when we grew up, whatnot, went to college, he was like, Hey, by the way, like my girlfriend is going to the same school as you out in Missouri. So it was, it was just cool, like small world kind of coincidence that we just happened to go to the same college when neither of us are from Missouri and, you know, our very first time actually meeting and hanging out, we went turkey hunting. Like, she's like, you want to go turkey hunting? And I was like, yeah, let's go. So the next day we got up and just been best friends ever since. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's true. That's hilarious. Yeah. And then you, then you both decided to stay out there after that. And do you, do you live together? We are planning on. on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Off and We're on. trying to find a place and yeah. get settled, you know? Yeah. 
I, I, I got you there. So when you go to a place like Missouri, that's completely new to you, how did you kind of get into the hunting out there? Like for you coming from Florida, Brittany, I mean, sure. That's quite a bit different. It's and, definitely, I mean, everything's different. The terrain, you know, you know, even the whitetails are just so different than Florida, just in all aspects, really, mm -hmm. if you think about it. But I mean, my uncle has 300 acres, so it made it really fun for me in the beginning because it's, it was just all mine, you know, and I've branched away from that now, but before it was so nice to just show up there, hang stands wherever I want, run cameras wherever I want, because Missouri just has a lot of rules. You, you know, you can't have cameras on public. You, you know, you can't leave your stands too long, blah, 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 you know? So anyway, it just, it felt so good to go there and I've gotten so comfortable there that I'm like, all right, now I want to change it up and I've been hunting some um, public in northern Missouri up closer to Kansas City where we live and it's so fun to just show up you know look at the maps and try and pinpoint where you think they're going to move it's just you know such a, it's a new challenge versus knowing what the deer do at my uncle's and mm -hmm. predicting easily you know what what's going on there and so it's just a new adventure every single time yeah that's cool I forget the question what, what? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so, all right. Coming from PA to Missouri. Yeah. The and like, yes, yes. Um, I mean, I started with a blank slate, literally knew nothing about, you know, Missouri and didn't have any connections or anything. So, um, and that was right around the time that Onyx was starting to become a thing, get mm -hmm. big. Um, so I literally just looked up Onyx and found some public that was near my school and went scouted it. I've been hunting it three years now, and it's kind of what it's been. I mean, I have a good time with it. It's a challenge, obviously. You know, public, the pressure is just crazy. And the the place that I'm at is a really heavily rifle-hunted spot. So not a lot of big deer, but I do see a lot of a lot of deer. So yeah. it's it's been fun, honestly. So, yeah. Yeah. Have you guys found success out there since you've been, been doing that? Yeah. Uh, so I... I guess coming from PA to the Midwest, I had high expectations to just see a lot of bigger deer. But this, like I said, because it's rifle hunted, I think it's just, they just don't get the chance to grow right in that particular area. Um, so the last, well, the first two years that I hunted it, um, I didn't shoot bucks. I could have, but I just passed on them and, you know, waiting for something a little bigger, more mature. Um, and then this year I finally shot a buck. So that's awesome. Super exciting. <laughs> Yeah, what was that? So, talk about the story a little bit with uh, with that deer. Oh gosh, um, this. Uh, so this year, um, I kind of switched it up and got super aggressive right off the bat. Um, uh, you know, like I said, I've been hunting it for three years now, um, and I just I wanted to switch it up. I was determined to shoot a deer, and so early season, I went in, scouted. I got on some bucks, found a bachelor group, and I was hunting them a bit, and then kind of didn't work out, uh, mostly because of the camera situation, self-filming. Um, so then I ended up moving to a different different location, and I got on another set of bucks and hung a stand, literally next day went in and shot this deer. Not the best shot, but um, so the next day I had to go back in and find him, but I filmed it, and honestly, like, I didn't really have any like expectations with the video. Like obviously I just film cause I like to, um, but it kind of got a lot of traction and it's, it's actually been like really cool and like exciting cause yeah. my content's actually doing something, you know? So, but it's been fun. And I'm sure just, just the fact that that was your, you know, first deer that you killed out there. First stuff. Missouri and, buck. So, and yeah, yeah. It meant a lot to you. I, I and, just worked really hard. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, public land, just going out and grinding, just trying to get on them is it's fun, but you know, it's, it's a challenge. So it's, yeah. it was cool to have it come together. Yeah. That's, that's, that's always awesome. And, and I've been following along both of you guys' stuff for a while. So seeing the, the content, <laughs> I, I love seeing like, I mean, it's, it's great to see people succeed, but when I like seeing the struggles that go throughout it before you get to that point, right. cause it just makes it that much sweeter. Yeah. In, oh, absolutely. Uh, I like working for it. Like mm -hmm. that's just the best part, honestly. Yep. Yep, just going out and basically getting your ass kicked, you know, a bunch of different times, yeah. and then, uh, and then eventually it works out. Right. That's, yeah, I I know that feeling mm -hmm. just very well, very well. But, yeah, and so with that being said, all right, so you went out there, you got this 
this buck on film, you killed it. What are your, I guess, expectations going forward? What are some of the things you're looking forward to as kind of like challenges with that? Like learning the areas better? What? Uh, well, I, I guess, I mean, like she said now, like, so that, that public piece is more east of where we're at now. It's, it's a quite a bit of a drive from Kansas City. So we're trying to find new public up north. Um, so I guess that's just more or less what our focus is going to be is just going in, figuring out a new piece and seeing what we can do with that. Yeah. So. What about you, Brittany? What about, give me a, give me a story from some of your adventures out there. Um, I've, I, I'm trying to think of a good one. I feel like this year's, this year's buck, I didn't get to enjoy it as much just cause I put, I, my uncle wanted me to go rifle hunting, which I hadn't done in a couple of years with him. So I was like, all right, you know, he's getting older and I just wanted to give him that satisfaction. And I know he does it every single time, but he, he'll pressure me like really hard into, into shooting any deer that comes out. Cause he, he just wants me to be successful, mm-hmm. which I, I understand, but I wish I could have, you know, enjoyed the experience a little bit more or appreciated it, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that's, that's a new challenge. So, you know, but my uncle has a good heart. So yeah. in the end, it, it meant, I meant the world to him. So yeah, that wasn't, that it's not as good of a story as we've had in the past, but honestly, this season I honed in on one of my target bucks, which I had three and I had him at 20 yards, but I could not get the camera to stay on him, which was the like t- most like roller coaster moment of my whole season <laughs> honestly because i'm <laughs> that self-filming life yes I, say, I don't envy you guys for doing that yeah. i tried it for like a day and a half and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, this is making it miserable for yeah. me it, it is because you're just like and it was like so perfect and i had everything set up and i we've been using racketer for a couple of years and i had this um spray scent and he just came right to it yeah. it was literally perfect because i had it um where it was the wind was traveling to him and from the the scent. So I put a stick out at 20 yards, and I was like, that's where I'm planning on him going. And he, She did. She had it literally a stick in the ground. <laughs> it literally <laughs> came right to it. It would have been epic if I could have just had the camera staying still. I had a an overhanging arm, so it just would not stay still. Yeah. And so <laughs> this is the most disappointing thing. But honestly, that was I mean, the best highlight of my season. Yeah. That's cool. And and as far as like, I, I just think it's really cool. And, and one of the reasons why I, I joked with both of you before this and said that, that uh, I didn't know what I was going to talk to you about on here and made it act like uh, I didn't want to interview you guys. But in reality, I do respect the hell out of what you what you do and the work that you put in with it. So I guess I'll be nice for once. We try to be original, you know? <laughs> authentic is well auth- yeah yeah is uh, that the word you use yeah. so apparently <laughs> apparently the other night uh we were out and having a couple beers and i said something that came across the wrong way uh-huh. to caitlin and she said something about my podcast and he I said, said I, i'm not original enough to be on his podcast i did not Fine. say that <laughs> i did not say that but uh that's the way she took it mm-hmm. but whatever <laughs> You know us girls. And here we are. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I wasn't going to say that because I don't want to get slapped on air. That would be the first time I got, uh, second time I got hit by a girl on the air. So that would be terrible. I'm kidding. Track record. I'm kidding. Um, So a a question that that I have, um, we can start with one and go to the other, is in in the outdoor industry, I guess, you know, you're seeing a lot more women starting to put out content and things around that. And as far as like being able to differentiate yourselves and be this word authentic when it comes down to it, um, the, the work that, that you guys are doing, the content you're creating, the hunting that you're doing, I think the reason why that both your pages have been growing and getting, it seems like a lot of engagement. Like I, I see this stuff. I, um, you know, I guess a content creator myself. I have myself. more engagement than I like to deal with, honestly. Like, I, well, the other day I was sharing kill photos. Like, I tell people, send them in, I'll post in my story. 
It literally took me five out of the seven hour drive coming here just to post everybody's kill. And I was like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> this is so overwhelming. But what that means is, I mean, that people are relating to your yeah. stuff and, and it, it's, enjoy, it's awesome. enjoy seeing it, you know, because yeah. I mean, I, I feel like sometimes there is, um, there can be a, a negative stigma with some of the, the content that, you know, guys and girls are creating out there. And I think that the the way that that you guys are doing it is pretty it's pretty cool to to see like you said you're sharing the not only the successes but the, the failures which is what yes. comes with and the, the emotional roller coaster like you described earlier those type of things aren't yeah. easy to talk about or you know express and then sometimes it just takes talking through them and and then kind of being able to um reflect on it i guess does that make any sense? Yeah. Everybody just wants to share their highlights on Instagram and make it like it's, you know, this perfect world, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Way more failures, I think, in hunting than people want to share. Yeah. And that's like, I mean, I, I had a, a kind of a roller coaster of a year too. And this is first year in a long time that I didn't kill a buck yet, which I'm going to tomorrow most tomorrow likely. Tomorrow in Ohio? Yeah, it's 100% <laughs> honestly. Good but, luck. <laughs> um, no, in, in all seriousness, like I, you know, I had opportunities, I blew it, I put a bad shot on a deer and I talk about those things and, right. and just because that's, it is what it is. It's that's reality. What, what, reality yeah. That's what happened and, and I think I wish more people would kind of be that way and, and share those things but not saying I'd do everything right because that's definitely not the case but um, Mr. Perfect yeah well yeah but original (laughs) yeah the OG but the OG yeah so I guess uh, I guess talk a little bit about your values in that and why why you're so passionate about kind of creating the content that you guys do honestly it's not hard when you love it Mm -hmm. I think we genuinely love hunting and you know we're just trying to relate to the average Joe. It's not about, we're we're not trying to be some celebrity or it's not about some 30 second fame thing. It's, we really love hunting. And if we're going to, you know, make a difference towards it or, you know, help it anyway, or guide other hunters or whatever, you know, and, you know, on their journey or hear about another hunter's story, you know, I know we get other hunter stories all the time, you know, so mm-hmm. it's just nice to relate to someone. It's, and it doesn't always have to be, you know, the same, like from guy to guy, you guys can relate so easy, you know, but guys relating to girls, you know, is so unique in this industry. It's, mm-hmm. I think, a really cool new niche, especially, you know, for us. And and it's not hard when, like, we're not faking it. Like it's just, we're doing, we're just out there doing it. And so we just like to share that with everybody and just take people along on our adventures and okay, guys, this is what we're doing today. We're hunting this stand, whatever. And we were successful or we weren't. And this is why kind of thing. And it's just, you know, we, 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 I don't know. We just really enjoy it, honestly. (laughs) Yeah. And no, and I, I think that, that you mean, you said it perfect and it comes along that way because people can see through the ones that are just trying to make it for you know X reason or do right. it for the Instagram photo and stuff and and there's a there's a huge difference between sharing everything because you truly enjoy it and you're learning and and helping others with it. I mean that's where I I, I love that whole side of things. Like when if someone sends me a message like sends me a picture of elk they killed out west and was like man i would never have done this without hearing about your podcast and seeing it was possible to do it like that right, freaking yes. makes me so happy to be able to to hear that and and yeah just you know what i mean yeah yeah <laughs> Cross just trying to unite us <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure yeah so with um do you do you find that most of your audience is women do you find that a lot of them are males like what is the like do you do you know that um, i'm just generally curious honestly i mean definitely mostly males but i th- i think there's yeah, just more of them mostly yeah <laughs> mostly men enjoy hunting yeah mm-hmm. um uh, recently i have i have i don't know about you but yeah, i, I have past. found a lot like Women are there, but they're silent. They don't, they're not like as engaging, I guess you could say on Mm -hmm. like commenting and, you know, stuff, but they message me or like, I actually, the first I really noticed this was I posted a photo of a doe that I shot and it was kind of like a women's post, like people or like women, like I said, they're kind of like silent, but I made this post and was like, 
you know, if, if you're a girl who's proud to hunt, you know, comment and raise a hand or kind of thing. And I had so many just women just like commenting, commenting and like messaging me, like you're so inspiring. We love it. Like kind of thing. And I just, I really love that aspect, like trying to get them involved. I'm always like, you know, if, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And I don't know. I just, they're there, but they're just kind of minority, I guess you could say. Yeah. And like, so there's, the, the way I look at it, and I, I think it's cool to see the the women that are really showing other women, you know, what they can do with it. There's like, so other, I've had a bunch of, not a bunch of others, but some other women on the podcast, Alex Templeton, um, Anna, Anna Lee Dickey. I don't know if you mm-hmm. know her. Um, I'm not familiar with her. Her Instagram handle is Outdoors Anna Lee. She's uh, from Pennsylvania. Okay. I, I, yeah, I think I've seen her. Maybe. Yeah, her and um. Does she Alex. do all the food? Yeah, she does all oh, the okay. food Okay, I follow her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Her food looks amazing, seriously. It is amazing. Yeah, she's she cooked some wild game for me the one time at Total Archery Challenge, and it's unbelievable. But uh, so her and then um, Allie D'Andrea, like those Outdoors Allie, like the, all you girls I respect because, you know, you're able to – be that voice. And that's an important thing for, for women out there for recruitment and just the, to give them the confidence and stuff. I feel like, I feel like they don't either don't always have an outlet or sometimes they're just like afraid, I think. And maybe their boyfriend or whoever is not the best teacher with a lot of things Mm -hmm. with women. Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's cool to be able to, be that outlet for them to be like comfortable with it and think, okay, if they're doing it, I can do it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I've, I notice a lot of that. Interesting. What about you, Brittany? Yeah, I've had, I've had quite a few girls reach out to me and, you know, tell me their story or ask me, you know, what they should wear, what they should use or what's better because they had a failed, you know, they've had failed products. And so, you know, I, I just tell them, you know, what I've used and, Honestly, I think girls do reach out more privately. Yeah. Do they? Yeah. 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 Which is which is cool with me. It's more personal, really. Yeah. With guys, we just don't know how to shut our mouths, so yeah. we just like openly. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm getting a bunch of eye rolls here that nobody <laughs> that nobody else no can see, see. <laughs> and I'm outnumbered. I think this is the first time I've had two women coming at me from each side <laughs> on the podcast, and it's it's kind of making me feel uncomfortable, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel too threatened yeah, yeah. no I, we're yeah. nice <laughs> i am <laughs> yeah you're nice i'm not always nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, uh but and so i i guess with 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 do you guys both plant you think you're gonna live in missouri for a while keep hunting whitetails do you have any you know stretch goals things that you want to want to hunt more of do anything different i mean we've been putting in preference points to wyoming for the last three or four years together so we plan I mean in seasons coming we plan on elk hunting we plan on you know antelope hunting because we did my elk hunt together just us so we had to scout alone and go at it alone and first find time elk ever doing by it, ourselves by <laughs> yeah it was our first time ever and we got on elk it was just towards the very end of our trip and we had stretched three weeks out of work so it was we were really stretched had to, thin had we had to, to go so it was super fun though, but this upcoming season, I think we have a lot more whitetail plans, um, just because our our points aren't ready to cash in, honestly. Mm-hmm. So next year, I think we're good for the draw. So we'll see. You know, maybe a little more western hunting. Yeah, yeah. yeah what, so explain that that elk hunt. That's really intriguing to me that you guys just went out there by yourself and and did that. Like, how did you prepare for it? And, like, find an area and explain that process. Do you want to tell it? Well, I feel so <laughs> weird saying, like, I had this intuition that we should go to this certain unit. Remember, I kept saying it. So, initially, we went, her uncles have hunted this one unit, like, almost to the, Super north. To the yeah, north, like, near Idaho, when they were growing up. Mm-hmm. And they were just dead set on going there. Well, they had wildfires, like, was that two? The previous, yeah, the previous year. So, I think a lot of elk got pushed out of there, and we just weren't getting on no elk sign like no sign no like vocal 
but at all. her uncles are like 60s 70s like they're older and so they they really can't get around the mountains like we can so they, we ended up just kind of branching off they went home and we found a different unit she she did have an, like an intuition like I need to go to this unit so we did and we saw three huge bull elks on the way in, like Ran as right we in crossed front of our into truck. the unit crossed in front of my truck i pulled over and was like should we get out here <laughs> <laughs> oh, we we're looking on onyx like okay are we on public are we on public <laughs> yeah it was so but yeah it was just kind of a a crazy deal and, mm-hmm. and we did get on elk just very late yeah. like I were, I were like four when we they finally came out right before dark they were like four or five hundred yards away and if we would have moved over where you suggested yeah. we would have been right on top of them yeah. which would have just been super hard for us to get out of there because yeah. getting in there honestly was it was just this crazy. big canyon basically yeah. they were on the other side and I don't know how we would have packed it out yeah it was we, we literally couldn't get over there we had to like we would have had to go down hit the river and walk that back up just to get to the other side. So it was, it just, you know, situation kind of didn't work out, but it was, it was a cool experience just to get on them. Yeah. First time elk hunting. You yeah. Know? That is, that's, it's so cool. Cause I, I can think of my first trip and like not having any clue going out there, just being like, one, the mountains are way bigger than I ever expected. <laughs> a little like, different than PA. Yeah, it's a little, yeah. Bit, <laughs> little bit different. And like it, when I'd be scouting on Onyx and, and looking at these spots, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go here today. By the afternoon, I'm going to be over here and I'm doing it. And I get out there, I'm like, that's going to take me hey, three days. Hey, you get days. out there and you're like, oh, that's not where I'm going to be. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually a cliff. That's yeah. I'm not going to get up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah actually, we, we experienced that as well. Did you? <laughs> yep. Yeah, we, we used... Yeah, it's funny because you'll just be walking along and then there's all these blowdowns. <laughs> and you're like, I guess I'm going to be climbing over those. Otherwise, you got to go out and all the way around. So we're mm-hmm. climbing over blowdowns for those suck so 30 bad. minutes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doing twice the work. Yeah. <laughs> Carrying gear, oh, yeah. equipment, camera food. stuff, food. But it, it honestly was really fun. Like just her and I being out there just learning it, honestly, yeah. it was just cool. How was that? Like, how did you guys camp? Like, did you. Were you staying at a cabin or something? We had or a tent. You had a tent. <laughs> just you set it up next to the vehicle, or yeah, yeah. And you guys just came back and and camped. Hiked it every day. Hiked yeah. it every day. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. We kind of so it was. Well, I forget the name of it, but it was it was like uh like national forest or whatever. So, but we had like the parking lot or whatever where we were sti- like had the truck obviously. And so we kind of were just like branching out different points each day. Like, okay, today we're going to try to get over here, check this out, see if we find sign, you know, whatever. And then if that doesn't work out next day, move over here kind of thing. So, yeah. but it, it, a lot of hiking and stuff. So we slowly chipped away at it, but yeah, it, it was a good time, honestly. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And, um, Do how want to tell them about the bear or should I? Oh my <laughs> gosh. I didn't even think about the bear. <laughs> the bear is the best part. <laughs> All right, so this was in rifle season, and we had one gun. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't have, like, a handgun or nothing. I had three bullets with me. And so we split up, and she's, like, somehow up on this, like, over this knoll. And uh, all of a sudden, I, like, look, I just kind of, like, glance down, and all of a sudden, this, like, I see something brown moving. And I'm like, what the heck is that? And all of a sudden, a bear's head just pops up and just... Like, like first, grizzly bear? first reaction, I was like, oh, it's a grizzly. But it wasn't. It was just a color phase bear. But I was like, oh, my God. Like, just initially, I was like, panic. And then he puts his head up, but he, he, he like, doesn't see me. And I'm like, all right, what do I do? Just let him go by me. So I just I stood there, you know, just let him do his thing. And then he starts heading straight to me. And I'm like, oh, shoot, what do I do now? And I'm, like, mentally prepping, like, I might have to fight this bear, and all I have is a knife on me. (laughs) Which he wasn't being aggressive or anything, but I was like, hey, bear. And he, like, he stops, looks at me, and he's just, like, staring at me, and then he keeps beelining to me, and I'm like, Brittany! Yelling. (laughs) We're literally, like, yelling back and forth, which I wasn't really trying to yell around the bear, but, like, she was just split up, and she is terrified of them. So I'm yelling. I'm like, there's a bear over here. And she ditches me. Wait, I she has the gun. so fast. <laughs> In the opposite direction. <laughs> and then as there was like a cliff over overhanging, I just let my whole body glide down. And took she was like two ridges back. over like within like 30 seconds. I don't know how she did it. 
So like the whole term "no man left behind" doesn't apply to you. <laughs> I'm like, uh, dude, you have the gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but I actually was re- calling to her, and I was like, "Hey, we just couldn't hey. hear each other." Yeah, she, I couldn't hear anymore, so I thought she just hid or took off the other way. So I was like, "Well, hell, I'm gonna go this way then." The thing is, I I know <laughs> she's afraid of bears, so I was like, I was trying to basically tell her like, "Don't come over here," because I didn't want her like running and just well, having I was a weird straight situation. Straight down to him. Yeah, she was. So, yeah, so. she was like, "Stop!" Yeah, it was. It was just a <laughs> crazy day. I was like, "You ditched me." <laughs> <laughs> I was all in tears. It was like, like a, "You have the gun." A quiet night in the tent, not talking. <laughs> yeah, I was it's so mad. Never a quiet night. I was so mad, and she's over there like, oh, "I'm so happy you're okay." <laughs> oh, I was so <laughs> terrified. I actually, my plan was to hike over across the ridge and see if I could get it to see if I could get my gun on it. <laughs> And she you. thought she was going to run around the mountain and shoot the bear. I was like, dude. <laughs> no logic whatsoever. Yeah. But I was on a dead sprint <laughs> to get over to the other side to see if I could see her. Honestly, like, I wasn't, like, I wasn't real nervous once I realized it wasn't a grizzly. So I was like, oh, gosh. But I knew she was going to panic. So I was like, oh, how do, what do I do? <laughs> so was there grizzlies in the area? In the north area yeah. we went at first. We, uh-huh. we didn't see any, but... They, they're there, just not yeah. kind of few and far between. Okay. So They're lesser where we hunted <clears throat> the first. After. Yeah. I gotcha. I was going to say, that's a, I, I have not hunted an area with grizzlies yet. I've been in Alaska not not hunting, camping and stuff. That's f- kind of, it's kind of an eerie feeling. Yeah. Just, and yeah. I did not sleep a single night in the camp, camp without taking Benadryl. Yeah. Because the first two nights I just didn't sleep. She's like I paranoid. I was awake all night. <laughs> like just... When we were in grizzly country. Yeah. When we yeah. weren't any more than it wasn't, I, I wasn't. Did you hang your food up or anything in the trees? Um, or did you put them in the We had mountain bag? house meals. Yeah. That's it? You yep. didn't have like anything else? Nope. Like no snacks? Yeah, we did, but uh, what? did we have a cooler? We yeah, so left, we just stuffed it in the cooler. Stuffed it in the cooler. Okay. Yeah, which, yeah, most coolers are kind of bear proof, maybe. Kind of. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, we were also mediocre, or not mediocre, um, rookies at this whole western hunting thing time. so yeah <laughs> now we know but yeah 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 no it, it's funny here though like that like i learned so much after my first trip that i can't believe like right things that i did I feel like a pro now <laughs> yeah i feel like a pro well, i'll do your little elk elk, elk elk call form oh nope I, my voice is a little too raspy today <laughs> caitlin you're gonna have to do an elk call uh, it's a cow call I, I can't bugle to save my all, life all right well let's hear it hold on <clears throat> I, don't, I seriously don't know if I can. Hold on. Let me do it off mic first. Mm, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I promise it's better when I'm not raspy, but. <laughs> uh, it is better. She actually, on the when we finally got an elk, she was cow calling, and we could hear the elk bugling right behind this big tree. It was the most intense feeling ever. Like, I should have just ran outside the tree and... So I could see him, but we were like, what do we do? We don't move. Yeah. We don't scare him. Well, what happened was, what happened was, uh, when her uncles went back home, they took all the calls. Like we didn't realize it. And so it was like, well, I don't know how we're going to call him. So I did it and he, I had one going, but that's hilarious. But I, I promise I can do it. I just not right now. <laughs> My voice is not there. I think it's funny. You should do it with the raspy voice some more. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'll pass. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. What else, so what other things from that trip were like either funny things that happened or things that you just like Oh gosh. Learning lessons. Driving on the, the bumpy road. <laughs> <laughs> Literally we were like You know the like like the the, bu- the little bumps in like a dirt mm-hmm. road? Yeah. Oh yeah, like when they get the washboard. Yes. yes. Yeah. Miles like miles back in where like the the entire road was like that. So we're going uh the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so funny. And then we just like started like literally doing that sound and we were just like dying laughing, like slap happy laughing kind of thing. So <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, I don't know what else what else happened that trip. I feel like we have funny moments every day. Yeah. Like we have good times every day. I think that's honestly what's kept our friendship so great is that we have so much fun together. Yeah. Just because we are together a lot, which, you know, you could get old to somebody or you're like, oh, you're you're on my nerve. Like get away. (laughs) So we try to have fun every day and 
I feel like we have comic moments literally yeah, all the time. <laughs> well, yeah, and and when you go on a hunt like that, or it could be, it's pretty difficult. And then sleeping, very taxing. And, and sleeping in a tent, like yeah, I always I say, you know, you either become like best friends with somebody or solidify that you're going to be friends forever or Mm -hmm. you're going to hate that person and probably never want to see their face again. And, you know, you, you always have the the moments back and forth where you might, uh, you might, you know, get mad at them or whatever that happens. But like, actually there, yeah, there's, there's experiences (laughs) I've had where I'm like, I do not want to hunt with that person ever again. Right. Yeah. Probably not even talk to them as a friend. It's just (laughs) One of those things back and forth. Nope, I'm stuck with this one. <laughs> I can't get rid of her if I tried. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't want to. No, I don't. I don't. Yeah. We have good times. And have you done any other Western hunts? Uh, I killed a mule deer in Nebraska last year, but as far as like well, that's, yeah, that's any other states, that was it. Okay. Was that a, was that a rifle hunt? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Oh, I got a mule deer in Idaho one year. Like three years ago? Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. You forgot about that. I wasn't there for that one. <laughs> to remind you. Words, two words. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Yeah. What, like, what, what kind of hunt was that? Like, it was it. Literally like- the fastest hunt I've ever been on in my life. <laughs> the fastest. Literally sp- spotting for an hour, spot one, t- hook off running towards it, which I'm not, u- I'm not used to that type. So, literally sprinting down the mountain sprinted up the mountain until I was 300 yards away lined up on him and um I actually I it was one of my good friends and he was like whenever you're ready and I was like and he was like whack to the ground and then I was over so that was the first morning too are you serious so my first experience western hunting was like wow this is so easy (laughs) (laughs) my second experience was not the same (laughs) yeah the second one just humbled you like hardcore right i honestly (laughs) thought that that's how it was gonna go for our elk hunt like i thought i was gonna spot it and then two weeks in she's like my feet hurt i'm like do you want an elk or not (laughs) let's go i thought i like dislocated my knee yeah like my I took the toolbox from, you know, Sitka. Mm -hmm. It was way too heavy. I don't know (laughs) what I was thinking. We were so... Yeah, we learned. We learned a lot. (laughs) We improvise a lot, so... And and one of the things that I would say is a takeaway from this, and something I love to stress is, when you're going on, say, you want to plan a Western hunt or whatever, you don't need to... you, You should be trying to be as prepared as possible, but when it comes to it, just do it. Like you learn things yeah. and you have these experiences that are like, okay, well that didn't work. Yeah. Next time it, I'm not yeah. going to do that. <laughs> or like this did not carry over from white tails. To right, elk. You yeah. know, those types, it's just all in getting there and actually doing, doing it. it. And l- that makes the story so much better. Yeah. And like, like when I go into, uh, go into hunts, like sometimes I overthink them and I'm like, no, just go do it. You learn for next time and you get, you know, better with it as you, as you go and refine those skills and I know thoughts. that feeling I have ob- I call them obsessed thoughts where I literally can't get away from thinking about deer and what they're doing and where they're going yep. <laughs> if if they're betting where I think they're betting and just literally Obsession. thinking about it so much and I'm like okay I, I need to like take a break from this for a minute yeah. I'm just obsessing over like you know being you at the right it. place at the right time you just want it yeah so bad <laughs> When like when I when I whitetail hunt, I hate it, especially in my home state, because I have so many spots and so many places I scouted, and um, that morning, every single morning during the rut, I have no idea where to go. Right. I have a million spots, but no idea. Where, right. I'm like driving down the road, like, do I turn now or yeah, go? Yeah, yeah, like, Freaking out and go. <laughs> Which one? Yeah, which one? <laughs> going back in my head, I'm like, damn it, like, Bo, you've been, you you know where to go. Like, just yeah. go with your gut. And I'm yep. like, no, but you know, this yeah, might. <laughs> be better over spin, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might spin and 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 do that. And it's it's just it's so funny. But then like when I go on out of state hunts, I'll go to Ohio, and I feel like I'm almost more successful because I I don't comp complicated as much yeah. like all right i went out there for a weekend i scouted found some sign i'm gonna go in there and look for the hot sign then just set up and hunt it where yeah then sometimes i just overthink the hell out of it especially i'm running trail cameras i'm doing this and i'm like well why was he here not then right, yeah. you know and, I'm, and sometimes i've realized that deer just do whatever the fuck they want and yeah. it don't matter what, yeah. <laughs> what you You're think like, you know i got him and then it's like nope you don't got him yeah <laughs> been there too many times that's why i'm like anything that can help me hone in 
any tools I can use, yeah. I take advantage of it completely. In a sense, I almost like I, I almost like going into a completely new area because of that reason. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't know. So it's like you're not obsessing over like, you know, the options. You don't have options. It's yeah. like you go in, you find the sign and you hunt it. So and that honestly was like that's how I killed my buck this year. I went in and literally the season opened on the f- September 15th. I killed him on like the 22nd, 24th, oh, something geez, like so that. Real early. Real early. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's always funny. <laughs> and and uh so I don't know about you guys, but when I'm up in a tree, I always can see another tree out there that looks so much better. <laughs> yeah. Same. If only I felt like moving my tree stand right. that's super heavy and unscrewing every single one of my mm-hmm. steps and rescrewing them in somewhere else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I know. You just overanalyze it. Yeah. And actually, it it might even hurt me now. I, I've been using a, a saddle, which is super light and easy to take down and move. But then, I, then I'm like, oh, I got to go over there. Then I move over there. I'm like, well, shit, I think that other spot actually might yeah. have been better. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. I do that all the time. <laughs> We're yeah. going to actually be using saddles this year, so. Are you going to give it a try? Yeah. That's awesome. We just think it would be it's just for better pu- for us. For faster. public, it's just like, we, we just like the mobility of yeah. it. Yeah. You know? That's what, I started using one this year, and literally I got it in the middle of the season, which wasn't um, ideal because I wanted to practice with it, but it took me like two hunts to get it figured out. Like it was, and everyone asked, you know, how comfortable they are. I sat five days in a row, all day sits, and I was as comfortable as you can be, you know, even you're always going to have a little bit of uncomfortable moments, but you do in a tree stand too. Like yeah, it's, oh, yeah, right? yeah. So it was like, it was pretty, pretty much game changing being able to, to do that and be so lightweight and mobile. I carry my four sticks and my, uh, predator platform from tethered. I've been using one of those and just going in and set up wherever I want to hunt yeah. at that point. I'm not married to a spot because of that, right. you know, reason to be able to stay, stay mobile. And yeah, I think, I think you guys will love getting to do that. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're honestly excited about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we'll see, see how it works. <laughs> see what happens. See what happens. See what we kill. <laughs> cool. So I know you're saying, you know, your 2020 plans, you have some white tail things. What's the number one thing that you're excited about? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. Um, personally, I'm excited about the new public piece that I just scouted last week. I'm so stoked. It is set up so well for bow hunting, in my opinion. And I think that once, I think early season will be really good because I don't think there's going to be a lot of people in there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I first first sit saw a deer. I saw a buck, a small buck. And so my second sit, I saw two does, which was a totally different area because it's just so big. I think it's like 3,000 acres. So I, I was pretty excited about that. Yeah. But, and I saw a flock of turkeys go to roost. So that was like yeah, turkeys an epic coming moment up. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with it coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly... We like we have a few out of state hunts planned and I'm 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 kind of excited for that. Like this year we only hunted Missouri. I hunted PA one day, but other than that it was just Missouri and I love Missouri, don't get me wrong, but I like to travel and stuff too. So I'm yeah. looking forward to just getting out there and getting after it kind of thing. So. Yep. Getting to some new spots. Yeah. What what are the out of state hunts you're looking at? Uh Oklahoma, Kansas, Illinois. Is that it? Possibly Iowa. If I draw. Oh yeah, she has she might have enough points. Well, you have enough points this year going into it, so she should Jeez. draw. That's uh, a busy schedule. Yeah, we're, we're trying. Getting after trying it. Trying to be busy. <laughs> I like being busy. I'm when I'm not. I'm. I get so bored. I know. I Whenever it's hunt, not hunting season, I don't know what to do. Yeah, with we're myself. like, what do we do with our lives? <laughs> I know. I'm like, what else do we like? <laughs> yeah, that's what everyone's like. All you do is. Like you're always in the woods or you're always on the road traveling. I'm like, I love it. Like I yeah. like just staying Live busy and, and doing that. I don't know. That's just, that's just me. And it sounds like you guys are pretty similar. No, literally the same. We, we love have, change. We have friends that like back home. They're like, Oh, we never see you anymore. I'm like, well, it's hunting season. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't you know? Don't, <laughs> you should know this. <laughs> don't you know? Hey, <laughs> hey, I know. I'm, I guess I'm part Canadian. <laughs> I'm also part British whenever I have a few drinks. Okay. All right. Guess we should have gave you a little alter drinks ego. The... <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. Oh, that's funny. All right. Anything else that uh, you guys want to talk about, or you think we want to wrap this one up? No more surprise questions. 
Oh, 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 yeah, are you kicking us off? <laughs> I'm trying to. <laughs> were you, were, were we original enough for you? No, not oh, really. Shoot. This one's Dang actually it. this one's actually gonna go right to the delete. Dang bin. it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll work on it. All right, send it to me first before you delete it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can we get a hold of that? <laughs> no, nope, uh, probably not. So yeah, you, you'll you'll take it and then just cut out my voice and then just act like it was a conversation <laughs> right, between right. you two. <laughs> well, I wonder how that would sound. That'd be so weird. A lot of silence. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't talk that much. I couldn't talk because you guys kept cutting in. No, oh, you're right. We feed off of each other. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that was that's that's a good a good duo for podcast yeah. scenarios. Yeah. So let's start with Caitlin. Where can people find some more information on you, the stuff you're putting out, and yeah. Well, this year the push is going to be YouTube. You know, a lot of video content. Um, it's just Caitlin Moss Outdoors on YouTube and also Facebook. Um, and then my Instagram is kind of complicated, but it's K eight L I N M underscore 34. Okay. I'll put that in the show notes. Cause it, yeah. Write that down. I don't think anybody's <laughs> going to remember that. I know it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I mean, we're kind of on the same Avenue. I'm also doing YouTube and uh, I think all my stuff's just under Brittany Barnhart and my Instagram's Brit Barnhart. So I just, cut out the a Hers and y. Is easier yeah say, why didn't you like listen the thing is learn the, the thing <laughs> is i made it i don't i don't know i thought i was being creative but it's like i feel like i'm too far in now everybody knows me as that and so i don't want to change it and like throw people off so just kayla moss yeah you'll find it i guess <laughs> yeah and and yeah yeah you'll find it i i ch- actually th- funny i don't mean to drag this on but i i changed my name like i had something like that with like yeah, my initials yeah. and the le- and my favorite number right, and all yeah. that stuff and i'm like and i'm like all right i i, I, I just changed it one time and I, eventually right i i just i made it like i think like in high school so I, it just stuck i guess <laughs> yeah all right well cool thank you guys for coming on i yeah, i do yeah, really i do really sure. appreciate it and hope you have a good rest of your show and beat the storm back yeah. to missouri or wait for it yeah wait for it to pass yeah, we'll see. i think we're I, th- I think it's already hit so we're just gonna have to wait for it to pass now or clear up all right yeah. cool thanks for having us yeah. hopefully you get that ohio deer i know yeah. good luck 100 percent. so yeah. good stuff <laughs> all right see you guys Thanks so much for listening to this episode of East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit eastmeetswesthunt.com, Facebook at East Meets West Outdoors, and Instagram at East Meets West Hunt. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.